Danish guy and how's everyone's Easter then? I mean, is your liver now coated in chocolate? Is the doctor having to pump your stomach on the couch? Was he even drool caramel at your nose? Well, lads, this is the Prem catch-up, looking at all the Premier League results from the weekend. And uh, some of these results were huge. Right, let's go. Liverpool 2, Arsenal 2. What a game! I'm sorry, but the narrative is that Arsenal blew a two-goal lead and just bottled the league title. No! That is not what happened. What are that the with stand on Sunday afternoon? Was a tidal wave of Anfield trying to suck the ball into the back of the net? That second half was like a European night at Anfield. I mean, sure, the first half hour of the game. Arsenal were coasting while Liverpool were hopeless. Trent Alexander-Arnold again looked like a slow, cumbersome bunny rabbit who'd just been hit by a car. I mean, Gabriel Martinelli absolutely roasted him like a cheap marshmallow. But once Mo Salah pulled that goal back for a half time, oh my, how did Arsenal hold on? Aaron Ramsdale, this is a man who's been relegated twice in a row. For any young goalkeeper, that would surely be enough to smack that smile off his face. Surely he'd now have confidence issues. I mean, it's my worst fear that if Gavin Bazin goes down this season with Southampton and then gets to move to Sheffield United in the summer and gets relegated again, I would be terrified that his confidence would be flushed down the toilet forever. But Ramsdale, honestly, he is a superb number one. And how is he not the England number one yet? Sure, he was helped up by Salah. Yet again, missing the target from the penalty spot. Honestly, he should never take a penalty again. But still, Still, some of the saves Ramsdale made were incredible. And yes, Roberto Firmino salvaged the point for the Reds. And yes, Arsenal fans will be disappointed, but don't be. Their record at Anfield has been mostly brutal. I've seen Arsenal go to Anfield and concede five times on three separate occasions. I've seen them travel to Anfield and concede four on five separate occasions since 2007. So to survive a Liverpool onslaught and leave with a point, instead of absolutely folding like they've done in the past, then fair play. Mikel Arteta leaving Liverpool with a 2-2 draw is actually a good result. But what else? Oh yeah, Andy Robertson was elbowed by an assistant referee. I want to sit here and say, Oh, what a disgrace that was! But I mean, does anyone really care? I mean, did he actually make contact with Robertson's neck? Does anyone really care what happens to this official now? I guarantee not a single person out there will have ever heard of him before this match. Is it really going to make any difference to your life if Konstantin Hadzidakis never officiates again? I mean, sorry, he should probably get a ban. Sure. But the way the media is reacting, it's right he just stuck a cigar out of Robbo's eye. It was just a flick of frustration, sort of, with his elbow. Sort of the same thing Bruno Fernandes did to a linesman last month. It was bad, sure. He shouldn't have done it. But please, everyone, just calm down. But Ozzy Arsenal surviving Anfield with a point. Imagine, imagine if they had lost that game. Having been tuned it up, only to leave with nothing. That would be a disaster. That would be a colossal punch to the ego and self-belief. I mean, if Abraham Kanati had just bundled in the last minute winner over the line, then sure, the Arsenal fans would now be well within their rights to hyperventilate it into their shoe. But, 2-2 two -two draw, as a result, that's fine. Leicester nil, Bournemouth won. This was hopeless. Absolutely shocking. Leicester City began this weekend sitting second bottom of the league. I mean, it is still mostly the same squad, which finished fifth in the Premier League twice. I mean, most of these players have won the FA Cup, so to be 19th in April is so embarrassing. How do you think James Madison must feel? There's a guy who's in the England squad, and yet he's playing for a team who are just two points off the bottom. But fine, okay? The perfect game to bounce back with. A home tie with Bournemouth. Fine. Show your class, score some goals, and stick the cherries to sleep. No, you instead lose one in at home, with Madison actually stupidly giving the ball away for Philip Benning to score. Jamie Vardy is the Leicester City legend, who always seemed to defy how old he was. Well, guess what? At 36, Vardy is done. I mean, this man really doesn't look like he takes care of himself anyway. Wouldn't be surprised if he eats steak every night, drinks whiskey before bed, and then chooses to sleep face down on the floor. And yeah, he's now stuck at just one league goal all season. I mean, last season he scored 15. This is one of the biggest drop-offs I've ever seen. It's embarrassing. He is now championship level standards. But I mean, the standing coach, Adam Sadler, hasn't seemed to notice. If I was Pat and Daka, being forced to sit on the bench behind that, a chunk of semi-retired cabbage, wheezing about in a fox's shirt, oh, I'd be close to getting sick on the wall. But Leicester, they're in massive trouble. I mean, they sacked Brendan Rodgers and now can't even convince a Leeds reject like Jesse Marsh to come and take the job. I mean, since leaving Leeds, that man has led on both Southampton and now Leicester. How hard must he be to negotiate with? You'd think he'd be scrambling for a job. And now Leicester are about to ring up Dean Smith. I is this for real? Dean Smith, the guy who nearly relegated this Aston Villa squad, a guy a few months ago who was sacked by Norwich, that's now who Leicester deem as an upgrade to Rodgers. How is any Leicester City player going to be inspired when they see this middle-aged bloke walk through the door? It looks like somebody should be working as a part-time mechanic. And let's not forget, he had the majority of this current Villa squad, plus a £100 million Jack Grealish. Um, yeah, they only stayed up by a point. I mean, look at this run of form. 
No wins in 10. 14 defeats in the final 24 games, including a 6-1 defeat at home. I mean, look at his relegation run at Norwich last season. Spineless is not the word. They took one point for the final seven league games. He masterminded 12 defeats in the final 15 matches. He is the opposite to Sam Allardyce. He doesn't come in to keep you up in a relegation battle. He does the opposite. I mean, at Norwich, he lost 5 0 at home twice. He got smashed 4 0 up at home by West Ham. Under Smith, Norwich put up as much fight as a three legged pig on his way to the slaughterhouse. I mean, he probably thinks that his pre match team talks were in the mold of Aragorn off Lord of the Rings. But in reality, he probably mumbles through them like some socially awkward nerd giving a best man speech at a wedding. Smith is a man who is a known relegation battle bottle job. So, Lester, don't you dare appoint him. Because. He will take you down. Honestly, I know he might look like Nigel Pearson, but he's not Nigel Pearson. Just go and get Nigel Pearson. Aston Villa 2 0 Forest 0. This is always a weird match. When you think of Manchester United versus Arsenal, a huge iconic fixture in public history, right? Yeah, both those clubs have as many combined European Cups as Villa versus Forest. But I'm sorry, something weird is happening at Villa. I thought when they lost three matches in a row in February and two games at home by four goals to two that this Unai Emery project was crumbling. I bet like eating a handful of custard creams in the bath. But no, this explosion has come out of nowhere. They've taken 18 points for the last seven games. Five clean sheets with Tyrone Mings in defense. I'm sorry, how do you go from conceding 11 in three to now two in seven? And let's not forget, this is the team who lost the four of the first five games of the season. Under Steven Gerrard, they look like a disorganized gaggle of pissed up hobbits. But now, they're unbelievable. Stevie G had banished Bertrand Triori from the team, deciding that this former Chelsea wonder kid was about as reliable as a toilet seat made out of meat. But now, here he is scoring two in a week. But the huge masterstroke was getting rid of Danny Ings in January. I mean, clearly his mere presence in the squad caused Watkins the height of insecurity. I mean, look at Territorial House Cat who gets put out by the dog. But now Watkins is without a doubt the favorite pet. And that, he's now scored nine in 11 games. What this reminds me of, is Leicester during the 14-15 season, where they came from nowhere to win seven of the last nine league games. Honestly, next season, Villa could do anything. I mean, they're currently sixth in the league. Right now, they're on course for European football. Who saw that coming at Christmas time? I thought there would be more chance of Santa Claus sneaking into my room to get sick of my face. And honestly, if Emery continues this sort of form with Villa into next season, I'm saying this now. Aston Villa could be an outside threat to get into the Champions League. I mean, Christ, they're only nine points at fourth now, and he's only been there less than six months. He took over when they were 17th in the league. Honestly, the longer Jared stays out of a job, the worse a coach he looks. As for Forrest, though, this does make me sad. It was all going so well. It was only two months ago. Steve Cooper had finally landed on a settled team, and they are unbeaten five games, only conceded twice, but what has happened since is a mess. No wins in nine. Their record away from home has been hideous beyond belief. They've lost three. 13 games on the road. I like Cooper and I don't want him sacked at all. But their away form is not just poor, it's an absolute disgrace. Away from home, they've lost 4 0 at Leicester City. You know, the Leicester who are 19th in the league. Sure, they've lost 6 0 at the Etihad, 5 0 at the Emirates, 3 0 at Old Trafford. But a 4 0 defeat at West Ham? They even traveled to Blackpool in the FA Cup and conceded 4. I'm sorry, Cooper, whatever your away day preparation is. Oh, it's not working. I don't know if he forces his players to eat nothing but bowls of gone off Chinese food on the bus. I don't know if in the hotel they all have to sleep naked with a creepy homeless man. But something, something is not working when these Forest players go away from home. As evidenced by the fact that John Joe Shelby literally passed to Triore in the box. And Ozzy, as someone who wants Forest to stay up, I am worried. Brentford won Newcastle 2. What a win! Raise your hand. Who thought Newcastle had burned out this season? I know you did. Everyone did. It was only a few weeks ago. Not only did Newcastle lose the Carabao Cup final, but they were also knocked out of the FA Cup third round. And oh yeah, and only won one in seven Premier League games. I mean, there were three nil-nil draws in that run. Newcastle actually failed to score in six games during that run. I mean, their only win came in the 19th minute against Fulham after a Mitrovic had messed up a penalty. If you had backed Newcastle to qualify for the Champions League in early March, you'd look at me like someone who thinks the earth is flat. But no, since then, five wins in a row. Forget burnout. This is Newcastle's third win in six days. This is their second win, and right now, Eddie Howe has them absolutely clicking. I mean, sure, they were lucky in the first half. Ivan Tony had a goal disallowed. He also missed a penalty. 
then scored a penalty, but Newcastle rallied. I don't know what Eddie Howe said to his players at half time, but pairing Alexander Isak and Callum Wilson together was genius. Anyway, Joe Linden forces a David Rea on goal, Isak spends it a wonder strike, and then Wilson scores a third, only for VAR to rule it out. But still, Brentford is a tough place to go. Nobody had won at this ground since Arsenal in September. This is a ground where Liverpool lost 3-1, where Chelsea failed to score a goal here. Man United were 4 0 down at half time, so for Newcastle to turn up here, again, their third game in less than a week, and to leave with all three points. This is arguably the most impressive win of the season. Wolves won Chelsea nil. Oh, Frank Lampard, what is the point? To me, there's always one fixture that I associate with Lampard as Chelsea manager, and that was Molyneux away, because I had very low expectations of him when he took the job in 2019, but it was in September 2019 when I finally woke up and took notice, because he had taken his Chelsea team to Wolves away and scored five. Tammy Abraham banged in a hat-trick, and weirdly, an own goal. That was the moment that I sat up and thought that, oh, actually, maybe Lampard is doing something as a coach. Frank Lampard is doing an absolutely fantastic job. Yeah, uh, I mean, it, it, it didn't last long, but here, this was completely different. Just a limp, meek, 1-0 defeat. Yes, Mateus Nunes pumped in a wonder goal volley. But again, Chelsea just one shot on target old match. It was desperate. I mean, Lampard emptied the bench. Chucky on Pulisic, Mudrick, Aubameyang, Chilwell. But again, it was like a frustrated monkey down the zoo, flinging his own poo at the wall. What was an interesting takeaway, though, was that Lampard persisted with Kepa in goal. Does nobody remember the last time Lampard was the coach? He looked like he would sooner have eaten a pizza made from his own grandmother's skin, then choose Kepa over Edward Mendy in goal. But here, he just continues to leave Eddie rotting on the bench. Lampard. If you want to succeed in this job, you need to stamp your authority all over this 11. If you think Mendy's better, play Mendy. Honestly, the biggest clue is going to be when Mason Mount is back from injury. Because if he is told to just sit and rot on the bench under his daddy Lampard, then it's official. Todd Bowley is picking the team. I mean, apparently, the only reason he appointed Lampard was because James Corden told him so. Really? That's how Chelsea are making their decisions at boardroom level now? Listening to the fat one of Gavin and Stacey? What is going on? Sound of Woodman City 4. Erling Allen is a joke. 30 goals in 27 league games. What's even weirder is that this is the first time in his entire career where he's ever 30 goals in a league season. But I remember the Community Shield in August when he slapped the crossbar against Liverpool from five yards out. There was an inkling in my brain that maybe, maybe Haaland might struggle in his debut season. Maybe. No. 44 goals by early April. Leeds won, Crystal Palace 5. Okay, how? How had this result possibly happened? Did anyone at all look at Roy Hodgson and think that he's still in a 5-1 Premier League away win left at him? It, it doesn't make any sense to me. Leeds United were the high-flying bunch under Javi Garcia. Somehow, this Watford Saki had somehow restored confidence and belief. And here, Patrick Bamford sticks a header into the top corner. You go 1-0 up against a relegation rival. Coached by an old man who probably needs to eat his dinner with a spoon. And you conspire to lose 5-1. Palace, under Patrick Vieira, we're a team who didn't know how to score. But I mean, get old man Hodgson back in the dugout and suddenly you're banging in five on the road? What? Tottenham 2, Brighton 1. Tottenham should not have won this match. Yes, Son Hun Min smacked in a wonder goal. Yes, Harry Kane rifled in a brilliant winner. But let's be honest, Spurs were lucky. Cal Matomo had a goal ruled out for handball when it hit his shoulder. And the man was so blatantly tripped in the box and weirdly gets no penalty. No wonder Roberto De Zerbi was sent off. Again, right in a 65% possession. They had 17 shots to Tottenham's 9. Christian Stellini is so lucky. Tottenham won this match because if they hadn't, and instead dropped 2 points, then they will be 5 points behind 4th. Having played a game more than Newcastle and Man United, honestly, they'd have asked the Villa breathing down their necks. When Danny Welbeck scored to make a 2-1 Brighton, seeing an Arsenal reject wheel away in celebration, this could have been an absolute Tottenham nightmare. Honestly, if they had lost this game, I think Stolini would have been sacked and probably replaced by Brendan Rodgers. Man United 2, Everton 0. Professional performance? It says 2-0, but let's be real. Man United could have absolutely battered Everton by 5. They had 29 shots at goal. Everton had one shot on target all match. But even in the first half alone, the amount of long balls that flew over Michael Keane's head, Jordan Pickford was exposed time and time again. All Everton's game plan was, was just to do last ditch tackles in the box. Honestly, I feel for Conor Goney. To me, he's a rock solid leader of a center half. He is an England international and yet has been dumped to the bench in favour of Burnley FC. James Tarkovsky and Michael Key, two men with Deutsch's Burnley fingerprints tattooed all over the skull. There are some footballers who probably hate their manager in this division. Make no mistake about it, considering Deutsch has set Cody's England hopes on fire, oh, he must hate Sean. If it wasn't for Deutsch, Cody would have probably joined Everton on a permanent deal in the summer and get to retire in his hometown with his son in the academy. But now, I'm gonna call it, he'll probably move to Sheffield United in the summer because Everton 
There just don't want him anymore. Fulham nil, West Ham won. I'm surprised at how David Moyes is still in a job. I'm not calling for him to be sacked. I'm just surprised that after a chaotic 5-1 defeat at home to Newcastle, in what was, I promise you, the worst defensive performance of the David Moyes era, and that he's been at West Ham for a while, I honestly thought Moyes would be sacked in the morning. But to be fair, I mean, I think West Ham have realised that like all the other clubs, there's no real managers available. I mean, what are they going to do? Just go on a date with Jesse Marsh? So, you know what? Fair play for sticking with Moyes, and you've ground out a 1-0 win over Fulham. Although, to be fair, the Cottagers are on the beach, and I'm pretty sure, now with Mitrovic suspended for the rest of the season pretty much, they're probably going to finish in the bottom half. And we just won. Let me know what, what do you think. Let me know what did you think of this Premier League game. Let me know if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to give a like, share, subscribe. And as always, I'll talk to you in a while.